Hey guys, uh, Matt with Kayak Buddies. Uh, today I just kind of want to give you guys an exploded view of what these things look like because I've had a few people have had damage from UPS and I've had to send them clutch housings and when they put the new one on it tends to be too tight and they get like kind of like a grinding noise in the gearbox. So I'm going to show you guys from head to tail, you know, what kind of parts this thing actually is built upon. This is your clutch housing, which obviously runs inside of a, a guide tube here. Now the tube itself, obviously, if you look down, this one's empty, has three different rubber kind of bushing slash bearings running down the uh, drive shaft. There's three of them in there and they don't really need any type of maintenance whatsoever outside of a little grease on the, uh, the drive shaft. There is a bronze fitting that actually is seated inside of that, which requires no maintenance over time. Now, as it enters inside of the uh, the foot or the gearbox, you can look in there and actually see. I'm going to take this apart in a minute so you guys can see it, but there is a pinion gear and a spur gear in there that is directly connected in line with that drive shaft. So I'm going to show you the do's and don'ts and explain how easy this is to correct any kind of gearbox noise that you feel is too loud. And I will tell you, these things were built extremely well. The tolerance on the stainless steel and the metal parts is excellent, so you're not going to have any issue with destroying the foot if, in fact, it seems a little bit too tight. No worries, I'll show you how to fix it in a second. All right, so let me show you guys here the gearbox. Um, inside of this, you'll see that there is a roller bearing in there that's not in need of any kind of you know maintenance. And inside of that, you'll see where, I don't know if you guys can see it in there, but the, uh, the drive shaft actually rolls in there. There's another slight bearing in there, I guess you can call it. It's a fitting that it goes through the actual uh, drive shaft. And of course, you'll see the pinion gear which looks like that and the drive shaft connects into that so basically you'll see it's a nine spline again they are these have curved gears it is straight into inside of it of course there's a curved gear on the pinion and the uh the main spur gear now you'll see this is a seriously heavy duty spur gear man this is not this is not a cast piece man it's heavy and of course you'll see in stainless steel here the output uh drive shaft so in here, of course, you'll see where everything kind of connects. And I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. It does have two seals, two TC seals, which are excellent seals. They're not kind of, you know, the cheaper grade. Um, but if you look down into the, the foot, you'll see that there's another seal there that prevents the gearbox fluid from obviously going up into the drive shaft. Not that it really matters, um, but you'll see that it's, it is nine spline. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when we put it back together. I'll do it piece by piece. This is your cover plate. The two bearings, which in our case, sorry, seals, um, actually sit inside of that to prevent the water getting inside of the gearbox. Very well made, trust me on this one, I would tell you if it wasn't. Um, it does have a seal, and of course it also has in there kind of an RTV material. Once this uh, connects into the uh, gearbox, it definitely keeps the, the water out. So, all right, so let me show you how this goes back together. All right guys, so let me show you what this looks like inside. I just laid the main spur gear in there. There's nothing that really holds this in place, not right off the bat. The pinion gear you'll see kind of slides right up in here. And again, it's not like you guys ever need to worry about this. So what I tell people is, you know, when in doubt, just give me a call. You know, these are, these are not serviceable parts for you guys, but pinion gear goes in, spur gear kind of floats right behind it. You can't kind of make a mistake on this. Not that you guys would be serving this, this, you wouldn't be servicing this anyway, but, and of course, drive shaft. So when the drive shaft goes in, it seats right inside of the bearing. You'll see there it is, it seats. Now, so that's what it kind of looks like without the cover plate on. If you look at the cover plate there, that in essence would be behind all of that. Now, of course, mind you, this floats. There's a bearing in there that will be held tight once the drive shaft goes in. Now, this is the part where people have asked about the noise in the gearbox. Okay. So when this spins, you'll see there's no noise. Beautiful, right? No noise because that pinion gear floats, no problem. So what happens was the, the drive shaft gear winds up, or the drive shaft winds up too far inside the pinion gear, which means there's just too much pressure on it, that's all. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video. I'm gonna put the drive shaft through so you guys will get the drift on it. When I push down on it, you'll hear that noise. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the drive shaft tends to be tight on these when they're brand new. So sometimes it'll make a gearbox sound like almost like metal to metal. And again, remember, there's no harm in what's happening. It just sounds, you know, like, like something's gonna, you know, implode down there, that's not true. So what happens is at the end of the day, I'll try to mimic the sound for you guys. This gearbox, when there's no pressure, is quite smooth. The moment the clutch housing is forced on it, you'll hear it kind of meshing a little bit too hard. 
right? So what happens is the gear, the actual drive shaft needs to be pulled out like probably a millimeter or two so it floats up and down like it should. Um, when the cover plate is on, of course, it's filled with oil. The oil floats in there, and again, not a big deal. The oil doesn't necessarily bring the noise level down unless it's obviously dry. Um, what's happening is that drive shaft needs to be pulled up, and it needs to float back just a little bit, okay? And I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so here's the easy fix. What I tell people is this. When you guys replace the clutch housings, oftentimes that drive shaft is kind of stuck inside of that pinion gear. You can use a vice grip you know, to pop out the drive shaft and slightly seat it back in. You'll see there's only one way it goes in. You just don't want to nail it in, don't hammer it in, just set it in and then put your clutch housing back on the drive shaft and of course tighten up here. This is of course that one bolt that you'll see here which fits in case um, the motor gets loose, which is that second bolt there. So what I usually do is this becomes the problem. Now, during the manufacturing process, it seems like that that hole is either too far down or they just push down the clutch housing a millimeter or two too far. So what I usually do is I will either do two things. I will either put a second hole in or I'll make that hole a little bit larger. Now, the only purpose of that hole is to keep the clutch housing from rotating around if, in fact, that bolt gets loose or comes out, which is never really happens, not that I've seen. So I usually take that and I will either, like I said, put a secondary hole here or simply open this one up and kind of move it up a little bit. Again, not a big deal. Just make sure when the drive shaft goes in, you grease both ends, pop it back in. And of course you'll see here, it has to fit right in those same nine splines. Now, the, yours most likely doesn't have the hole in the middle, so I can usually tell how far the splines go in. But in your case, you just want to grease that and just let it let the gravity of the clutch housing go back on as you slide it back on the sleeve. Now, remember, this goes in like this. Push it down. Remember, I'm doing this completely backwards. All right, then as you push down, you'll see that it lines right up with that hole. Now, imagine this is what it looks like. Okay, so it's somewhere right around here. So the problem is the clutch housing is just, it's just too tight. So you want to slide this back up. Remember the, remember the bolt hole in here, guys, remember, should be a little bit taller technically than the bolt itself. So you want to either open this up or put a second one in. I don't usually put a second one in unless I absolutely have to. What I usually do is I will go in and I will open up that hole literally by a millimeter or two upwards. So it actually brings the clutch housing up. Put your drive shaft back in and that will eliminate that noise. Now, there's gonna be a little bit of noise in there, guys. There's no way around it because it's a downforce when you torque the engine, but it's not harming a thing. Trust me, these things are built to take the punishment. There you go.